Hello everyone and welcome to today's session. My name is Alba Tojero and I am a biologist with a master's degree in oceanography and marine environmental management. I am currently working at Submon, an NGO based in Barcelona and founded in 2008, which works in the study, conservation, management and awareness of the marine environment. We promote a sustainable change in the relationship between society and the ocean. During this lesson, we will be introducing what is monitoring and why it is important. Also, we are going to explain monitoring plans in Catalonia where Submon was implicated from 2008 to 2019, specifically the Posidonia Oceanica monitoring plans Pignan Novelis monitoring plans and the fish species monitoring plans. To end, we will also explain why citizen science is not always suitable. The purpose of monitoring is to gather useful information, to develop a conservation policy, evaluate management results and guide management decisions. Monitoring is an important activity in biodiversity conservation and conservation biology and has been described as the centerpiece of nature conservation across the globe. Monitoring basically consists of making reliable observations in the nature to detect, measure, evaluate and draw conclusions about changes that occur in the species and ecosystems in time and space in a manner that is nature natural or as a result of deliberate human intervention or involuntary. It is applied in many ways to find out the status of threatened species, the spread of invasive species, the health of ecosystems, the effectiveness of protected areas and other conservation actions and to assess the status and major trends of biodiversity through indicators and monitoring exercises at national, regional and global scales. It is considered that 50% of the meadows of the Spanish state are in regression. It is well documented that the Posidonia meadows regression is majorly caused by anthropic activity, such as the industrial waste, discharge of urban wastewater, and the so-called mechanical damage, like boat anchoring. The simple fact of throwing the anchor can lead to the loss of 16 to 34 beams per boat. Inadequate installation of concrete mooring blocks can cause a greater impact. In addition, in summer, the installation of concrete mooring blocks and, in many cases, in Posidonia Oceanica. For these reasons, it is important to have Posidonia meadows monitoring plants. Before starting with the monitoring plants, let's get into the species to know more about their characteristics. Posidonia oceanica is a superior plant endemic of the Mediterranean Sea. Remember that it's not an algae. It is the largest and most robust species of Phanerogen. They have adapted to the sea, forming meadows and complex ecosystems. They live in sandy bottoms between 0 and 25 meters deep in Catalonia, but in the Mediterranean Sea it can be found until the 40 meters. The Posidonia oceanica is a plant, so it depends on sunlight. In clearer waters, the light will reach greater depths like this species. They form shoots of leaves between 4 and 10 with dark green color and up to 1 meter long and 1.3 centimeters wide. These seagrass meadows generate between 4 and 20 liters of oxygen per day per square meter, 
been one of the most important sources of oxygenation in the Mediterranean Sea. It has a habitat importance because it's a protective and breeding habit of many species, is a food source, production of organic matter or biomass, stabilization of sun dynamics, and net producers of carbonate sediments. The legislation at European level says that these both directives on the conservation of natural habitats and of wild fauna and flora and the Mediterranean fishing regulation make express reference to the prohibition of trolling, dribbling, traps, hooks and other similar nets on seagrass meadows. A total of 33 fish species were taken into account when monitoring. In past studies, it was studied 33 fish species, so we continue with the same to be able to compare results. Anyway, there are three species of fish that are taken into account when monitoring fish species in the Posidonia meadows, the gillhead brim, the sea bass and the common dentex. Both three are species of commercial interest and indicators of the reserve effect. The gilt head brim has a really characteristic gold colored mark between the eyes. It has an oval body, deep and compressed. Regularly has a curved head profile with a small eyes. The mouth is low and very slightly oblique with thick lips. The dorsal fin has 11 spines. The sea bass has an elongated body with a mouth terminal and moderately protractable. It has two separate dorsal fins, the first one with between 8 and 10 spines and the second one with one spine. It can reach 1 meter in length. The common dentex is very characteristic for its remarkable teeth. It has a moderately elongated, high and compressed body, slightly pointed head with rounded profile in adults, with small eyes. It can reach 1 meter in length. The novel pen shell, Pingna nobilis, is the largest bivalve of all the Mediterranean Sea. It can reach up to 120 centimeters in length, fixed to the bottom and in close relation with the population of marine phanerogens. This species is endemic to the Mediterranean Sea. Nowadays, our eyes are seeing the extinction of the novel pen shell due to a protozoan of the genus Aplosporidium, specifically the Aplosporidium pinae. First of all, we need to know the characteristics of the place where we are going to run the monitorium. There are different types of Posidonia meadows. Continue, discontinue, fragmented or stained, and insulated shoots, as you can see in the slide. Also, we can find three different types of seabed sand, rock, or mud. Before I start collecting the data, we have to make sure we have all the material we need. We need a tape measure with a minimum of 10 meters, a compass, PBC quadrants subdivided into 4 20 20 squares, polyester paper and a pencil, a photographic or video camera, and a 30 cm plastic roll. Before continuing, it is important to know what it is a transect. It is a technique used to obtain estimates of densities 
population sensors or to sample certain indicators. At Posidonia Meadows, we can measure the density, which is measured by the number of shoots per square meter. Take into account that a single leaf is not a shoot. A shoot is the set of leaves coming out of the same leaf level. The outer leaves are the oldest ones and the inner leaves are the newest. You can see an example in the slide. So, how do we measure the density? According to the image on the slide, starting from a central point, three transects of a length of 10 meters are created with the help of a tape measure and a compass. The directions of measuring the density will be 0, 120 and 240 degrees. Density is measured three times for each of the transects. At the beginning in the meter 0, half in the meter 5 and at the end in the meter 10. At the slide, you can see an example of the density results. At Submon, it was developed a specific index to evaluate the density. It was calculated the expected value of the density at Posidonia Meadows in Catalonia, which is the optimal value. This value is compared with the observed values. When monitoring, we can also measure the coverage which is measured by the percentage of soil covered at Posidonia Oceanica. So, how do we measure the coverage? Starting from the midpoint, three transects, 10 meters long, are created with the help of a tape measure and a compass. The courses taken to measure coverage will be 60, 180 and 300 degrees. The coverage will be measured five times for each transect in the meters 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10, as shown in the image in the slide. The coverage is defined as 0, 25, 50 or 100% of the soil covered. You can see an example in the slide. When monitoring, we can also measure the burying, which is done by measuring the distance between the leaf ligo and the sediment. In the slide, you can see an example where the ligo is above the sediment and it is possible to measure the distance. In this other slide, you can see another example where the ligo is below the sediment, so it is not possible to measure. This brewing can be the result from adverse atmospheric phenomena. Now we are going into the novel paint shop monitoring. How do we do it? Creation of tracking stations made up of 2 meter long bars, numbered and hair reference. These bars will be the origin of the different circular transects of the radius 5, 10, and 15 meters. In order to search for individuals, the perimeter of the circles is crossed by sweeping an area of 5 meters wide with the support of a bar. All the individuals found are marked by a bridle and a number that identifies it. What do we measure? We have to take a photograph of each band of marked individuals the date of observation, the zone, depth, position, if it's right or inclined, orientation, the bottom slope, predominant current, the type of bottom, if it has epiviance such as sponges, zones, zones, the height of the visible part of the individual, the maximum width, the width of the base in contact with the bottom, the distance to the mark, the direction where the individual is located, respect the mark, and the ge geographical position in UTM 31T. 
Now we are going to talk about fish monitoring. The main goal is to know the fish population of a Posidonia meadow. We want to know the presence, absence, the space category, and the abundance and the measure. How do we do this? First of all, we have to define the initial coordinates and the random heading. Then we start the transect with origin and course. The length of the transect is 50 meters and the width of 5 meters. Usually, the fish monitoring is, during, is done during the summer due to the sea conditions, but also the winter to know more information about the seasonality. Also, the transects are done during the night, since there are differences because of the circadian cycles of the fishes. It is important that if we want to compare results, we should always do the monitoring at the same season and at the same time of the day. We did all monitoring during the summer and during the daylight. During the transect, we take note of the number of individuals we see, the species and its measure. The number of individuals and the species give us information about the reserve effect. The number of individuals and the measure give us information for the fisher's interest, which means the commercial interest. Sometimes there are limitations that cannot let us do the monitoring, such as the visibility, the sea conditions, and the diving physiology, depth, and dive time. Also, there are some error sources, like the person who does the sample, which means it's training. It can uh, get to errors like the species recognition, measurements, distance, observer fish interaction. Also, it can make some error sources like the fish, its distribution in space and time. To end the lesson, we want to explain to you why citizen science is not always a suitable choice. During the time Sobmon carried out the Posidonia Oceanica monitoring, different groups of people helped make it happen. The fire brigade, regional police and some diving centers were trained to help with monitoring. At the slide, you can see the difference between observers when monitoring fish species at Posidonia meadows. Even they were trained observers, the difference between the results are significant. Also, there were problems with the measurements of density at Posidonia meadows. Volunteers, despite the previous training, were not clear about the difference between the Posidonia leaf and the Posidonia shirts. This led to errors in the final results on the density of Posidonia meadows. For this reason, it was decided that using citizen science was not suitable for monitoring Posidonia meadows and fish species. Thank you very much for your attention, and remember, no water, no life. No blue, no green.